Thank you everybody for attending. My name is Omar and I'm joined with Sean on the Club Runner team. We're going to be leading us through the club website administration training, allow me to show you what topics we'll be covering, and then we'll jump in to the Rotary Branding Center so that I can show you how to make a club logo, and then we'll go right into the club account to get some website administration uh, stuff done, like changing the website. So let me go ahead and show you the next slide here. Uh, so over the session here, we'll be uh, creating our club logo in the branding center. We'll be using the Club Runner live page designer to make changes to your club homepage as well as add some automatic essentials widgets and other widgets to your club homepage. I'll also show how you can get started on creating custom pages and getting them entered into your navigation menu. I also want to make sure to show you how to upload documents to your club website and link them in widgets or your navigation menu to make them available publicly or only for members. And uh, finally, I'll be going through creating an event in the event planner uh, system, as well as adding some website content like uh, stories and time willing, I'll also uh, go into the bulletin module and quickly May, uh, throw together a newsletter and send that off. I do want to uh, mention that while I'm going through um, the webinar here, I'm going to go to the Rotary, brand, uh, Rotary Branding Center. There we are. Uh, so while I'm going through uh, this session here, uh, I may not be able to go as in depth into a module as I'd like. If you're interested in learning more, say about the uh, uh, the bulletins module or your club attendance, definitely check out the training, uh, sorry, clubrunner.com forward slash training list. And on that page, you'll find the webinar that we currently are in here, the club website administrator training. But at the very bottom, you'll find our deep dive series, which goes into specific modules. I'm um, just looking here for our bulletins module and it is here on July 26, for example. So if you're interested in just one module to answer your specific questions, definitely sign up clubrunner.com forward slash training and then you can sign up for some of our deep dive series which really focus on a module okay let me carry on here i'm going to return to myrotary.org i'm just going to show you guys quickly how to create um, your club logo i'm not going to go through all of the steps of creating it i just want to make sure you see where you can get that done so i'm logged into my.rotary.org and in the top blue bar i'm going to hover over news and media and then click brand center Okay, and once I click Brand Center, uh, Rotary will kick us over to the Branding Center. And to create your own club logo, you can go to the Materials tab and then click Create Your Own. Pardon me, it's being a little finicky here. I'm just going to go ahead and click that and then click Create Your Own and click this View button. Okay, and once, and once you're here, you can click any of the templates that Rotary has available for you. And then as soon as you click it, you can go ahead and create and customize some of the text that appears in the logo. So keep that in mind. Once, once you're done with this process, it'll spit out a PDF file or image file. And once that's done, you can get it into your club website. So let me carry on into the club website. I've already prepared a club logo for our club website. And here is our club website. We're, we're currently logged into the Rotary Club of Greentown, our demonstration website. To log in, you'll see the member login link in the top right of your club homepage. Once you click that, you'll be brought to your login form. And after entering your login name and password, you'll be kicked back to the homepage. And that member login link will turn into this member area link that I'm going to click to enter the member area. So let's go ahead and click member area. And that'll take us into the club database. To begin, I want to show you guys some, uh, uh, really, the homepage designer. And then we'll work on tailoring it and navigating to other areas to get content onto the homepage, as well as in the navigation menu and build a custom page. So let's go ahead and click New Website Beta in the top blue bar. And then in the gray bar just below, I'm going to click the Homepage Designer button. OK, and that'll open up our live homepage designer. In the live homepage designer, you can drag and drop widgets from our content tab here onto the homepage. You'll see a few drop here boxes, or you can also uh, drop widgets above or below any other widget. But before I get carried on on the widgets, I want to show you some options you have with your club homepage. So in the homepage designer, I'm going to click this layouts tab right here on the right side of the page. And once I click that tab, you'll have a few options on how you'd like to organize your club homepage. So currently, we can see that it's set to the 
full width top band above three columns layout. And what this shows us is the full width banner, which is where our carousel is. And this will stretch across your whole monitor. And just below that, we'll have the top band, which is limited to its horizontal space. And just below that top band, you'll have the three columns that are sort of denoted in the layout. You can always switch back and forth between layouts. It will uh, uh, temporarily remove the widgets from a column, and it'll bring them back if you switch back. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to use this full width top band above left sidebar. So I'm expecting our left column widgets to stay, and our right column widgets will, will be removed. But if we switch back to the three columns, those widgets will return. So I've switched to the left sidebar. We can see our right sidebar is missing, and the widgets content there is, is removed. But we can always bring it back by clicking the three columns layout, and the system will remember your previous layout. Okay, I'm just switching back to the three columns. Some layouts I know a lot of clubs like to use are, are the full width top end above three columns if you're looking to get as much information as you'd like onto your homepage. In other cases, it may be helpful to just use the full width top end and bottom above, uh, above nine bands. And this, um, this layout is simply just the full width top band where our carousel is located, and then a bunch of top and middle and uh, uh, bottom bands that stretch um, not quite across the full screen, but are, are limited to uh, the full three columns. It'll be one column just taking up the three column space. Okay, I don't want to spend too much more time on layouts. Definitely check these out to give your homepage a different uh, uh, build, different sort of layout, really, looking for another word. You can also try to poke around with your club's themes. So let's go ahead and open up this tab. I'm just going to click this themes button in the top right of the homepage designer. And that'll open up the uh, theme options you have. Currently, this demonstration account is set to the community next gen no banner with the Azure and gold color swatch. So this is the current theme selected. We can always switch back and forth between themes similar to layouts. Let's go ahead and use this cloud next gen banner theme. And I'm going to choose the Azure and gold Azure and gold color swatch. And to do that, I'm just going to click this color swatch, and that'll automatically apply the changes to the page. So once once we've applied it, we see the banner is located at the very top of the club website. And uh, sorry, part, some of the colors have changed for the home page. And you can poke around with whatever colors and uh, theme you'd like. Let's go ahead and just try a few others. I'm just going to poke around community next gen no banner. So the banner has been removed, but the colors again are changed back to a, to a different, I believe this is royal blue and sky blue. Let's return to the original one. I do like the Azure and gold color scheme. And I think it just fits nicely for uh, Rotary Clubs. You can, you can definitely check out some of the similar color schemes, the blue and yellow and yellow and blue themes as well, if you'd like to try that, in addition to other themes with the Azure and Gold uh, color swap. OK, so that's the themes. Definitely go around them. I know a lot of clubs looking to make broader changes to the club website. Um, layouts and themes are a good place to start just to give you that fresh feel. And then once you've chosen a theme and layout, um, start to dig into the widgets. And I'll, and I'll go through demonstrating our widgets here, too. So let's, let's go into the content tab for our homepage designer. I'm just going to do that by clicking this content button in the top right of the homepage designer. OK, and once and once we click that content tab, we'll have a few widget groupings. I'm just going to click this pre-formatted widget grouping to close it. And here you can see all of the widget groupings we have. We have uh, pre-formatted widgets. These widgets are uh, typically an image with a text box that you can just enter an image into and then customize the text. Uh, the essentials widget category is one I really want to dig into because I know there's a lot of essentials and automatic widgets that manage their content from your club's member area. Uh, we also have some carousel widgets like this dynamic carousel on our club homepage. As a matter of fact, this is a good opportunity to show you that anytime you drag and drop a widget onto the page, and title it or even make a change to it, it'll automatically be saved as a widget in the homepage designer. So for this homepage carousel 2020-21, we can see that this carousel has been saved right here in this widget. Uh, it says the exact same title. And to preview this, I'm going to click this magnifying glass in the top right. 
Okay, and once I click that magnifying glass, we can see the uh, carousel up here. It's just a preview, so a lot of the actionable links will not be available, but it does give you a way to quickly look at the widget before you drag it onto the page and publish the changes. So let me leave carousels for now. We also have some links widgets. These widgets are just a quick way to include a bunch of links um, into your club homepage. I'm just looking for example, an example here. See this club history and story widget uh, is, is exactly this links widget it, and these two uh, uh, links are linked to an area. And, and we can further customize this links widget by hovering over it and clicking the outbound arrow icon. I'll do. I'll return to the links widget. I want to quickly skim over the remaining groups, and then I'll drag on some specific widgets, and we'll, uh, we'll get some changes made to the website here. So let me carry on. We, we're also going to go through uh, some of the bulletin NPR widgets. This widget will list your club's bulletins, as well as any sponsors that you guys have entered into your website content sponsor library. And I'll make sure to show you guys the sponsor library where you can add an image for any website sponsors and then uh, a URL so that once a visitor clicks the image, they are taken to your sponsor and then they can browse their website some more. Okay, that's the bulletin NPR. Uh, we also have these two custom widgets, global and page specific groupings. The custom widgets, global widgets will be available for your, your homepage, your, your homepage designer like we are on now, in addition to the custom page designer. So while you're using this to create your homepage, you can also access the custom page library and open up a custom page to edit it live and reuse these custom global widgets on that custom page. That may be an option for you. In contrast, we have the custom widgets page specific grouping, and these widgets will only be built for the page they were created on. So in this case, if we create a custom widget page specific for our home page, it would only be available for the home page. And we see we, we've got some saved widgets like this barbecue image. I'm just going to preview it and show you. You can preview it by clicking this magnifying glass. And once I click it, we'll, it should load. Yep, there's our barbecue image. So you can go ahead and dig around your content widgets tab to see if previously at the club, somebody has created some website content, and then you can either further edit that content by reviewing the widgets with that magnifying glass icon, or by uh, creating your own custom widget, either using the custom widgets or a pre-formatted widget to include some image and a text. Without, without talking much more, let me show you uh, some of the widgets. And some I know a lot of clubs like to use are in this essentials widget grouping. And I'm gonna just go ahead and drag some of them onto, onto the page like this meeting information widget. So uh, let me go over that again. I did that really quickly. To get a widget onto your club homepage, you can click and drag the widget, and you'll see it sort of hops out. And then you can either drop it where it says drop here to drop the widget in that area, or you can drop it above or below any other widget on the page. So for this photo albums widget that exists here, I can either move my cursor slowly up to drop the widget above this widget or move my cursor slowly down to drop it below the widget. So let's go ahead and drop it above. Club executives are important. Let's go ahead and get this at the top of our right column. So I've got both the meeting information and the club executives and directors widget on the page. To edit content from these, from these essentials widgets, typically it'll take you to the area where that content is man managed. So for that, for this meeting information widget, I'm going to click this outbound arrow icon either in the middle of the widget or at the very top right, and that'll take us to the area to edit the content in the widget. Okay, and once I do that, it takes us to the club info and settings page. This page is also in the admin tab in the club info and settings um, module here, this page right here. Okay, and we can change the club details as well as the meeting information to have the uh, widget update its its uh, its information. Let's go ahead and quickly do that. I'm going to change um, the club's motto here in the club details to uh, to. Let's go ahead and just remove it altogether. I think that'll be apt. So it was previously there on the widget. I'm just going to delete the club motto and let's throw in. Um, uh, actually, let's let's make one change at a time. So we'll leave just removing the club motto and I'll go ahead and also change our meeting schedule just to make sure that changes on the widget as well. And to do that, I'm going to hover over this meeting section and click the, the pencil icon, the edit button in the top right there. OK, that'll open up the edit meetings information. Let's quickly change this to Wednesday and 7 p.m. 
convenient just to have some change. And I'm going to leave the rest. I, while I'm here, I want to mention um, if your club meets online uh, in this uh, meeting information widget, you can open up your meeting details and choose the option to show that your club meets online. And once you click this checkbox, you'll have the meeting URL field available just below where you can copy your online meeting URL. In this case, it's a zoom.com link. And then you can also include some private details that will only be available to members who are logged into your club website. So for anybody who isn't logged in, they will just see um, login to view more information. But once a member is logged into your club website and they're brought back to the homepage, they will see the join us online link and it'll link to this meeting URL, as well as the private details including the, the meeting password or whatever details you'd like to include. You can replace this text with any other text you'd like to replace. I'm just showing you, for example's sake, I'm just going to change it back to Zoom password, one, two, three, four. Okay. And uh, there are also some other um, meeting uh, information you can change. I, I'm just skimming over a lot of this as there is more content to go, but you can also update your address information. And once you've entered your address information, you can click this update latitude and longitude checkbox to use the address address information you've entered and Google Maps to plug in this latitude and longitude value. And once the meeting information has that latitude and longitude number, um, I'm going to go ahead and save these changes. Once the meeting information has that latitude and longitude, uh, your club information, which will be able to show up uh, the Google Maps uh, pinpointing where your club is on the map. Okay, that's so I've made a few changes. I've removed the club motto. I've changed the schedule to Wednesdays at seven. Let's go ahead and go back to the homepage designer by clicking this go back link in the top right of the club meeting information page. Okay, and that'll kick us back to the homepage designer. Right at the top, we can see that our Wednesday at 7 p.m. update has taken place for the widget, and uh, we removed the club uh, greeting text. So that is no longer available. And actually, while we're looking at the widget, you'll see the uh, what visitors see when they're logged in here. It says, join us online, log in to view t details. And that's just beside my cursor right here. I hope you can see that. But that's what a visitor will see. Once a member is logged in, it'll look a little different. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that once we publish the home page and go back to the live page to view some changes. Okay, so that's the meeting information widget. You can also update your club executives and directors widget once it's on the page again from this essentials widget grouping. To do that, again, I'm just going to hover over the widget and then click the outbound arrow icon in the top right of the widget. And that'll take us to the area where the widget is retrieving its information. So for, for the club executives and directors widget, it takes us to the club executives and directors page. And here we can make some changes to add a position. Let's go ahead and quickly throw in a treasure to do that. I'm going to click this blue edit link, and then I'll have this edit position screen. Uh, I don't want to change the position or the title. Let's just select a member to enter here. I'm going to choose John Ford and click this orange save button. And that'll save John as the club treasurer. If we go back, we should find John is part of the club executives and directors list. And there he is. We can find him right there in the treasurer position here. Okay. And actually, uh, let me return to this club executives and directors list. I want to mention um, while you're using your club database, you can uh, anywhere you see these three vertical dots or six six dots in a grid, you can click and drag those dots to reorganize the list. How, however, you'd like in this case for the club executives and directors. So we can have Judith Draper with this Rotary Foundation chair position be the last position in the widget and, and this list. And to do that, again, I've just clicked and dragged these three dots. And as I drag the position around, I'm going to drop it at the very bottom. So to do that, I'm just going to let go of my primary mouse cursor, and that'll drop it into place. Let's go ahead and go back and make sure Judith is at the bottom of this list of our club executives and directors list. And there she is. She's been moved to the bottom. So let's uh, let's carry on. So those are two of the essential widgets I know a lot of clubs like to use. Another widget that sort of uh, segues into website content is the homepage stories and homepage news widgets. And I'm just going to use the homepage stories widget. It's, it's actually already on the page right here. Let me move it to the top of the homepage designer. And to do that, I'm going to click these six dots in the top left of the widget and then scroll up the page 
until I see the drop here in the top of the middle column. And then I'm just gonna let go of the primary mouse cursor. And that'll drop it at the top of our uh, three columns here in the middle column. And similarly, for most of the Essentials widgets here, we can click this outbound arrow icon to manage the content for this widget. And in this case, it'll take us to the club's uh, stories widget in the story library. So when we're here, we can see exactly which stories have been added to the widget. And we can go to the club's story library to view all of the stories from the club database. Okay, so these are all 18 stories in the database. Let's return to the stories widget, the widget that is being used for the homepage here. And at the top here, you'll note it, you'll note that it that it tells us that we have a maximum of six total stories that we can set into our um, into our homepage stories widget and the widget will limit itself to six stories so we have a total of eight stories here it seems as though two stories these bottom two stories will be cut off so what's the next for rotary and elect to be civil let's go ahead and just confirm that i'm going to go back by clicking this go back link and if i scroll to the bottom we should only see a total of six stories so website content webinar world polio day rotarians report Report email scam, growing a future in Cape Town, fundraiser for COVID mask, club barbecue, and that's where it ends. There's, it's just limited to six stories. And you can change this. This is no problem. You can change this by editing the widget's properties. And to do that, I'm going to hover over the widget and click the gear icon in the top right of the widget. So once we click this gear icon, and many widgets have this properties icon, um, once we click this gear icon, you'll have some general settings at the top of the properties tab. A lot of widgets have this general uh, settings group. You can set some padding uh, above, below, to the left and right of the widget. You can also assign a border and some thickness. Um, let's, let's quickly do that. Um, it, it is not necessary that you change these borders. Really, what I want to show you are some of the uh, contextual properties for each widget. So uh, many widgets will have this header property section where you can retitle the text that appears above the widget. So for, I'm just going to move this out of the way. For our homepage stories widget, we can see the widget title is appearing right at the very top of the widget right here where, I'm, where my cursor is. Let's go ahead and change this to club stories and projects. And I'm going to continue to show the title by leaving this checkbox checked. Let's scroll some more and see what other properties we have for this stories widget, including the limit, the sixth limit that we're trying to get rid of. So just below the header, we have our content properties, including the content item title. So that would be the, in this case, the website content webinar story title is the title for this story and it is set to show. Uh, we can also set a color for the story titles, show the thumbnail for the story if it's set with a thumbnail, as well as uh, the story brief and story, uh, well, uh, show the story brief, which is the, uh, uh, the summary of the story, the first text box you enter for a story. Let me show you that once we resolve this six story limit, just scrolling some more, you can also change the font type for the widget, um, the color of the text in the widget, as well as some other line separators between the stories. The line separator, let me show you this. The line separator is this gray line in between the website content webinar story and the World Polio Day continues story. Okay, so you can change a lot of aspects about the widget. At the bottom here, this is what I've been hunting for, is the layout for our stories, which our stories widget, which we can change to the columns or scrollable. Let's use scrollable. I know a lot of clubs like this scrollable layout. And once we save it, you'll see the changes. And let's also update this items to display to eight, the total number of stories that we've added to the widget. So I'm gonna go ahead and save our changes. I've also updated the widget title, so we should see a few things change here. Bear with me here as I save the changes. There we are. Uh, I see the club stories and projects is still here. Let me go ahead and open up the widget to see if the list is still good. There we are. We still have our eight stories. If I return, I suspect the website publishing system has has adjusted the widget to show the new layout. So I've I've changed it to that scrollable layout. So now we have these left and right arrows for the stories, and it should cycle through eight total stories. As a matter of fact, if I click that outbound arrow icon, um, we don't have that notification saying that we're, we're within the limit for the story uh, widget. So we're good. We've got these eight stories there. Let's leave uh, 
Actually, I do want to quickly show you this sto story brief, um, story content, and thumbnail options for the story. So I'm going to click back into the widget and click the website content webinar story title, and that'll allow us to edit the story right here from the widget. Uh, once we're here, I see uh, we've got a title. It looks like this image is not entered into the thumbnail for the story. Let's go ahead and fix that. So to do that, I'm going to hover over this thumbnail area, click the change link, the edit button, and then choose a new, a new image from the club's image library. I'm just going to go to the My Images folder, which you can use to add images to your club image library. Let me, let me go over the steps to do that. So once you've opened up your club's image library, either through changing the thumbnail for a story or by clicking the image editor tool in a story text box, you'll find uh, this typically this image properties will open. You can click this browse server button. It'll open up your club's image library and in the my images folder, you can add or remove any images. The other folders are the rotary images locked, club runner images locked, and the photo albums locked. And the club runner and rotary images are truly locked. You can't add images to them. The photo albums are stored in the website content area in the photo albums library. And I'll show you guys that as we get into the website content section of our, of our session here. But let me carry on with the image library here. Uh, I've opened up the image library for our story uh, brief, and I'm going to add this sun, sunset cityscape image into the story by double clicking the image from the library. But before I do that, let's add our own image into the image library. And to do that, I'm going to click this green upload button at the top of the library. So let's go ahead and click that. You will see um, my Windows File Explorer appears in a new tab, and I'm going to go ahead and choose this, um, this barbecue image. So to do that, I'm just going to double click it. And once I do that, you'll see a upload bar. And once the system has uh, finished uploading it, it'll be plopped right into your My Images folder. I also want to mention you can right click your My Images folder and create new subfolders to further manage your images. Say you have plenty of profile pictures for your members, you could pardon me, you can split that up into the profile pictures folder by just creating a new subfolder and then um, using that folder to manage those images. And I want to mention, you can also just drag and drop an image into that folder. Let's do that for this uh, black uh, uh, presidential theme logo. I'm just going to move it right into the, uh, oh, once we do that, we have the option to either copy it or move it. Let's go ahead and copy it. So I'm going to go ahead and use that copy option. Click OK. It will remain here. But if I click profile pictures, we can see the copy is also entered into the folder. OK, so that's uh, uh, getting images into your club's image library in a nutshell. Once you've uploaded your images, you can use the uh, image editor tool. I'm just going to show you guys that again. This image editor tool where my cursor is to add an image to your website widget or story. Or if you have a thumbnail, you can also uh, click the thumbnail to edit it. Let's go ahead and get this barbecue image in here. And I'm going to, as a matter of fact, I like the uh, sunset webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to change this to the sunset uh, cityscape. And then I'm going to delete this image from, uh, from the story by clicking it once. And then it'll highlight blue and clicking the delete key on my uh, computer here. OK. Uh, allow me to elaborate on the story brief here. So the story brief is the content that appears um, in the story uh, homepage stories widget at the top. You can also choose to show your story content, which is this second box you can enter for the story to include more information about the story. I guess while I'm here, this is a good chance for me to show you how to create a link in the website stories, as well as widgets. They use a similar uh, editor tool. If you'd like to link, say, um, anything to your story, we can enter the text, say, click here to open up the uh, website content training video just to sort of build on this story. And then once we have that text in here, you can highlight the text and click this link editor tool to open up your link dialog. And, I, and one thing I want to spend a little bit of time on is this link type drop down here. So you'll see this link type drop down for this link properties, as well as when we go and build our navigation menu, you'll have this link type drop down 
account where you can choose the club's built-in pages, any custom pages you've created for your club website, um, documents, download files, sign-up lists, photo albums, uh, speakers, the whole nine yards. If you've, if you've created it in your club database, chances are you'll find the link type to that content in that link type dropdown. Okay, I'm going to just link it to the built-in page and let's go ahead and just have it linked to the club's uh, club executives list just for uh, simplicity's sake. I'm not sure if we'll return to the story, but I just want to show you this link feature. So to save our changes to the story, I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the story and click this orange save and publish button. And that'll update our website content webinar. I'm going to return to the homepage designer by clicking this go back link. And if I return here, uh, it looks like it's being cut off because the layout only displays so much. But if we change the layout for the story, we should find the link. And I'm just going to quickly do that again by going into the widgets properties, hovering over the widget and clicking the gear icon in the top right. Okay, and that'll open up the widgets properties. We know the layouts are all the way at the bottom. I'm going to change it to regular and save the change. Okay, and there's our link at the very bottom of the website content stories is click here to open up the website content training video and we link that to our club executives, but the link is there. Uh, once we publish our changes, we should find them on the club uh, on the club homepage when we view the live page. Okay, some other widgets I want to make sure to mention are our events widget category here. So I'm going to close out the essentials widget grouping, but definitely check out all of the other widgets that are here. You can include a, your club president's president message. You can include a anonymous contact us widget where you can enter. Uh, let me show you this one actually. This one's pretty apt. So I'm going to drag and drop this contact us widget below the club executives. And once I drop it into place, this new page will open to set the properties for the widget. We've seen this general grouping. I'm just going to title the widget contact us with an exclamation mark. And then you can also enter this contact us email. And let's go ahead and just use support at clubrunner.ca. Okay, so with that entered, I'm gonna click this orange save button and save the changes to the widget in the browser prompt. And once we get back into the homepage designer, if we scroll to the bottom, we can see the widget is sort of being previewed for us here in this contact us section. Once we publish it, we'll see the rest of the form. Okay, uh, uh, let's go into the events widget category. I still want to cover uh, uh, the website content, including the sponsor library, which is super important. I'll quickly skim over the photo album library. So let me show you the essentials widget or the events widgets before we move on. In the events widget category, you can include a mini calendar for any events or calendar items created in your club website. I'm just looking for an area to drop this. Let's drop this at the top of the left column. And this is what the club calendar widget looks like. For any events, you'll see the day is, is shaded gray. Uh, you can also include your club speakers if you've entered speakers into your events module. That's already on this homepage. Let me scroll to it. Here we have the club's speakers widget. If you'd like to edit your speaker information, similar to the essentials widget, you can click the outbound arrow icon and it'll take you directly to the area in the member area to edit that content. So here we can see our James Usel speaker, and he is the only one set in the future for July 22nd, and that's why we see him in the widget. Uh, let's quickly add a second speaker here. I'm just going to click this orange add new speaker button uh, in the top here. I'm going to choose the date. Let's do the 29th. Uh, I'm going to call this business speaker series three. And I'm going to say Kevin Gardner, just as a, as a makeup name. And let's say we're sated with that. You can also enter some comments that, that you can choose to appear in the widget. Uh, let's, let's go. I'm going to just enter an example comment. And then finally, we have this checkbox confirming that you can add the speaker to the club database. Um, uh, you can just check that checkbox to add them as a contact to the database. It doesn't include an email address. So you would have to open up the contact to include that information. But let's just check this checkbox and see save our changes. And I do want to make sure to quickly go over the contacts module too. So uh, we've got our speaker in there. Let's return to the homepage designer by going into new website beta and then homepage designer in the gray bar just below. And that'll take us back to the homepage designer. If we scroll down, it looks like our contact us widget has been built for us. So it's displaying here. And then below that, we have our second speaker, Kevin Gardner, in the speakers widget. I want to mention each widget 
uh, definitely check out the properties pane for it because there are different options for each widget. So for the speakers widget, we can open up the properties pane here. Again, we've got our general settings at the top, the title and header properties, but all the way at the bottom, you'll have more contextual properties for the widget. So for the speakers widget, we can choose to show speakers in the past where right now we're only displaying up to six months of speakers into the future and we have not limited um, the number of speakers to display so it'll display all of the speakers coming into the future for up to six months you can also show speakers in the past let's go ahead and set this to three and i only want to show two speakers from the past and uh, let's leave the other other options here so we've got the highlight background to highlight the background for the speaker as well as show the photo if there is a thumbnail for the speaker i didn't enter one when we were creating them so let's go ahead and save these changes there we are. And once I've saved them, we can see the upcoming speaker section at the top, as well as the past speaker section at the bottom. Okay, that's enough for the speakers widget. Let me show you the upcoming events widget. We're also going to create an event in our uh, webinar here. I'm just going to do that from this widget here. So uh, once we drag and drop the upcoming events widget onto the page, you'll see your events list. Again, check out the properties pane for the club events. You can control how many events appear. Uh, in this widget. In this case, it'll only show events in the future, and in this case, up to five events a year out into the future. Okay, so I think uh, if we'd like to create an event, okay, we have one more spot. I see four events are created here. Let's create one more quickly to get it into this club events widget here. So I'm going to go and do that by clicking this outbound arrow icon for the widget, and that'll take us into the events module event planner list. I'm just going to click event planner to show you we're in the same place and that'll load up the events planner list. I want to also mention um, this upcoming events widget will also display calendar items entered into the events module. So to get to the calendar items, it's in the same events module and calendar items recurring. Let me show you um, that repeating event. Here we are. This is the weekly club meeting that's repeating weekly and showing up four times in our widget. But let's go ahead and add an event planner event. So to do that, events module, event planner in the gray bar below, it'll take us to our events list. And to create a new event, we're going to click this orange create new event button. I'm going to quickly just throw in um, some example information here. Um, let's uh, gather, gathering. Um, uh, let me just let me just carry on. A lot of the information that isn't highlighted in yellow isn't um, isn't necessary, so you don't have to fill in those fields. The event code is used for uh, payments with an online payment account if your club has one um, to process those payments. I want to also mention uh, the donations module, which is really recent, also uses that online payment account um, to uh, uh, receive donations and in an events case, event registrations. Uh, but for, before I carry on with building the event, let me elaborate a little bit more on online payment accounts. If your club is interested in signing up for an online payment account to process event registrations, donations, or uh, invoices sent to your membership so you can collect the membership fees, definitely check out clubrunner.ca. I'm just going to pull this up in a new browser tab. And if you'd like to sign up, click features in the top bar. And if you scroll down some more, you'll find our online payment feature. And once you click that, you'll, you'll be given some information and you'll have the option to choose your country where your club is located below. And this will uh, connect you with our preferred payment provider for that country. So in Canada here, we are partnered with Bambora, though I know a lot of clubs are also from um, America and internationally, I should say, but for our clubs in the USA, we've partnered with Paya to process those transactions. So just keep that information in mind. Um, if you're interested in learning more, once you get to the online payment page, you can scroll to the bottom and you can review the fees charged by the payment provider, in this case, Paya, um, to manage the account, as well as at the very bottom, the uh, forms to sign up for the online payment account. Okay, that's enough talking about the online payment account. Just be aware it exists so you can process those event registrations online, as well as donations and invoices sent to your membership. So you can collect all those fees and transactions online using this integrated online payment account. Let's come back to our website designer. Uh, I'm, I'm back in the creating event here. I'm just going to quickly throw in some date information. Let's go ahead and have it on the 28th. I'm going to skip the description as well as any other fields I can skip. 
Perfect. So we've got our event name and dates and no other information. If you'd like to include an image for your event, you'll have this image um, uh, option. Let's go ahead and just quickly add one. I've clicked choose file. My file explorer loads. Let's use a different barbecue image. I'm just addicted to barbecue. And that'll add the image to the event planner event. To save the event, I'm going to click this orange save button. Okay, so we've created the event. It exists on a page on the club website, but the registration hasn't been open yet. To do that in the registration section, you can click this edit registration options link, and that'll allow you to customize more of the options here. So for our event, we have the starting registration date of today up into the event start date, July 28th. Um, you can also opt to choose to allow public registrations where visitors can register for the event, uh, allow members to register their own guests. And uh, once you receive a registration, you can choose that the event chair receives an email confirming uh, that somebody has registered. Okay, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this uh, all the same. I'm just gonna save it. Um, uh, I'm just gonna save it so that we enable the registration here. I guess the most important thing I want to mention is that top checkbox is what uh, is is checked to enable the registration, but it it does do that default for you once you click the edit registration options. Okay, so once we've done that, we've created the event. It is member only. We didn't set to allow public registrations. Um, scrolling down the event, you can set the payment settings, including the cost to register for the event. So let's go ahead and quickly set this to fifteen dollars. I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then select the currency, um, uh, pardon me, I'm looking for American dollar, but let's just use Canadian dollar. And once we do that, you'll also have the option to, to choose which online payment account um, you'd like the funds to process to. So in our demonstration club, we have Beanstream, uh, Bambora connected. We can choose the Bambora account for event registrations to be processed using this online payment account. Okay, so that's that's all I want to spend. I, I have more content I want to go through. I see we're sort of uh, uh, limited on time here, so I don't want to spend more time on events. We still have to get to uploading documents, updating your navigation menu, and publishing those changes. And I can't forget sponsorships. Let's go ahead and make sure you guys have that information. So we're done with the event. Let's return to the homepage designer to make sure the event is entered into the events widget. And to do that, I'm going to use the new website beta module at the top of the member area, and then homepage designer, that gray option in the gray bar just below. And once we do that, we'll be brought to the homepage designer. If I scroll down to our club events, I can see uh, here we are, club events. And just on July 28th, we can see the Christmas breakfast gathering, very out of place. Usually this is in December, right here in the middle of the widget. But there we are, you can add your events to the events widget and then have people click the link from the widget to go to the ev uh, events registration page. I haven't published the home page, but once we're done here, we'll get that done. Okay, uh, let me show you. So here we have a website sponsors widget. This which will take us directly to the website sponsors. Again, you can find the website sponsors widgets in the bulletin and PR widget grouping. And they are the last three, or sorry, the three of the last four widgets here. We have the all sponsors, animated sponsor, and single sponsor. They all work differently. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't spend the time to tell you exactly how each one works, but succinctly, all sponsors is all of them. Animated will cycle through one at a time, and single sponsor will only load one for the page at a time. Once you have the widget on the page, any three of them, you can hover over the widget and click the outbound arrow icon, and that'll take you to the sponsors library. To get here from the member area, let's let me let me show you. I'm going to use the website module, so the not the new website beta, just the website module, and then website content in the gray bar below. Once I click that, we'll have a few options in the middle of the page, such as the homepage stories list, which we use for our homepage stories widget, uh, homepage download file, similar uh, similar download files widget, and so forth. Uh, to get to the sponsors library, I'm going to click this libraries link in the left hand menu. And that'll open up the menu. And just below, you'll see the sponsorship website sponsors link. And once we click that, it'll take us to the area to manage our website sponsors. So here we see that no sponsors are active. And that's why our sponsors widget appeared grayed out. Let's quickly add a sponsor. I'm just going to throw one in here. Um, Greentown Realty. And I, I'm I, actually, let's go ahead and set this with Google. And I'm going to choose an image um, just 
a random image. Let's go ahead and use um, this corn barbecue. Again, just addicted to the barbecue here, apparently. So we've got our image entered there. We have a start date for the sponsor. You can also set an end date to when to deactivate the sponsor. You can also leave this empty and the sponsor will remain available on the club website indefinitely until it's removed. Um, and you have some other options here. Once somebody clicks it, this number will increase for you so you can count how many people are clicking your sponsor as well as the sponsor's information to tie um, their contact information into the listing on the club website. Okay, I'm not going to uh, spend much more time on creating the sponsor. I just need to set this province. Let's go ahead and set it to Ontario and save the sponsor. There we are. So we've created Greentown Realty and it links to google.com. If we return to the homepage designer, we should see that barbecue image in the sponsors widget. Let me return to the homepage designer. We should check this out here. Okay, I know I'm closing in on the Q&A time. So again, um, uh, at about 6.05 or so, we'll switch into the Q&A section of the webinar. Uh, my colleague, Sean, will take over and answer all your questions. And I'll still be around in the Q&A uh, questions box to answer your questions. So please keep them coming in. Even during our Q&A session, we're always around and we'll answer your questions. Um, let's go ahead and check on that sponsor widget. I'm just gonna scroll down our drafted homepage here. And here we are in the website sponsors, which we can see that barbecue image and it should be linked to google.com. So I've, I've done that. I'm noticing um, we've got some repeat widgets here. We've got the mini calendar, the meeting information. And if I scroll down the column, we see the mini calendar again and the meeting information again. And I wanna mention these widgets are um, tied together. If you make a change to one mini calendar widget, it'll change all of the mini calendar widgets similar for the meeting information but I'm not happy with it being listed twice on the homepage. You can remove widgets by hovering over them and clicking the X icon in the top right of the widget. So let's do that for the extra calendar and the extra meeting information widget. The original widgets, the ones we added, are still here at the very top. Okay, so we're closing in on finishing up some of our homepage. We've changed some of the stories. We've added our widgets to the left and right columns. We've poked around the themes and the layouts. Let's edit the navigation menu to get more links into the club website. And to do that, I'm gonna hover over the navigation and click this outbound arrow icon, and that'll take us to the manage homepage menu. If you look at the left, you'll see those three dots that we can use to uh, further drag and drop the items. This looks a little messy. Let me just close down some of these uh, groupings just so it's more easy for you to see that we have, th th uh, pardon me, a few main tabs. Let me just close this one down. You have a few main tabs. You have the About Our Club, Our Club Projects, and Events and Calendar folders, which are drop-down menus. And then we have some direct links to the donate to our club page, as well as a contact us page um, linked here. There's also some other uh, custom contact page. Enough talking about what's here, let's create a new one. And to do that, I'm gonna use this orange add new menu item. And I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And once I click that, like I mentioned, when we were creating a link for our website story, you'll have this link type dropdown to choose the type of content you'd like to link into the club website. Let me uh, segue into documents here. So I'm gonna choose the link type document. And once we've selected document, you'll have your documents dropdown list. And I'm just gonna choose one of these documents here. I'm just gonna choose the website document in the website documents folder. And once I have that selected, I mean, I ideally we would do this before, but we'll enter a menu title here. I'm just gonna title this um, download our application form. For example, you can you can upload uh, whatever document, I shouldn't say whatever, but a specific document to your club's organization documents tab. So if I go to the top blue bar, you'll see the documents in the organization documents tab, and I'll go there after creating this link. Um, and then you can add the document to your club's document list, and it'll appear in this documents dropdown. Let's save this, uh, let's save this navigation menu item. So I'm going to go ahead and click this orange save button. I want to mention you have some options to change the style. Uh, we will find that a few of the links already in the navigation menu are assigned the secondary and primary style. So you'll get to see them once we go back to the uh, homepage um, designer. Okay, so we've we've added our 
uh, download our application form navigation menu item here at the very bottom. Let's move it into a folder. I'm going to click and drag those three dots to the left of the item and then drag the item into the About Our Club folder. Once I have it here, you'll see this orange line to denote the uh, navigation menu will drop into this folder. And there we go, we've dropped it into the second place. We can drop it at the very top of the About Our Club form. To save our changes to the homepage navigation menu, we're gonna click this orange Publish Menu button and then click OK on the browser prompt. Okay, our menu has been published. Let's go back. I've only made a small change in the About Our Club dropdown, and it wouldn't be visible from the designer. Once we publish the homepage and view the live page, we can view all of our changes. And we're almost wrapping up. Um, we've gone through the sponsors uh, events. I think I think we're good actually. So we've we've added our event content. We've we've uh, edited our stories. We've created a uh, we've added the mini calendar and added an event to the upcoming events widget. We've even created some sponsors for our club website from the sponsors library and using this bulletin NPR section. Let's publish our homepage so we can see the changes. And before I go ahead and publish the homepage, let me show you what the page currently looks like. So in a new tab, I'm just going to go to uh, the, the Demonstration Club website. And if I pull it up, you'll see our Facebook plugin widget is at the top of the middle column. Um, the club executives is missing. And uh, we still have our mini calendar here. But if I go to the About Our Club, I see the navigation menu has updated, but the rest of the homepage has not been updated. And I want to mention the menu was updated when we click that Publish Menu button on the Manage Homepage menu. So that's why this is updated, but the homepage is not. Let's go back to the design tab and to publish our changes we're going to click this orange publish button in the top right of the designer okay i'll return to the home page by clicking this view live page button that'll open up a new tab with the home page and once we do that we can see our changes the club stories and projects widget is at the top of our uh, column we've got our club executives our mini calendar which was already there before uh, and then our meeting information which we added and updated and i guess i want to uh, take a moment to mention here is the private details, Zoom password, and join us online link. So these are available because we are logged in as Charles Hampton, the site administrator for this account. But if we were to log out, let me go ahead and do that. I'm just going to log out. We'll find that if we scroll to this meeting information, that pr those private meeting details, that, that Zoom password has been removed from the widget. And this link, even though it looks linked, if we click it, um, it'll ask us to log in before we can review that Zoom meeting URL. Okay, let me go back to the homepage. We've uh, updated our homepage. Let me show you how you can create a custom page uh, quickly here. And then uh, you can, we will include that in our navigation menu. So I'm gonna just log in again as Charles Hampton here. There we are. And once I've logged in, I'm gonna click member area to enter the club's member area. Um, Perfect. So in the top blue bar, I'm going to click new website beta. And then to get to the custom pages, we can click custom page library to view all of the custom pages or click create new page to create one new custom page. Let me show you the custom page library. It's a little more uh, encompassing of everything and you can still create a new page from the library. So I've clicked custom page library. We'll find a lot of pages in our demonstration account here. I want to create a new page and to do that in the top right, I'm going to click this orange create new page button. Okay, and once you do that, pardon me, you'll be offered some templates to begin your custom page from. I'm going to choose a template, though personally, I like to start from scratch. You can start from scratch by using the blank template at the very bottom of the templates list here. But let's start with, with some content. Let's use this become a speakers um, template. I've clicked it once, it's selected. Let's click the orange next menu and the system will create our new custom page from the become a speaker template. Okay, so we've gone ahead and published, or sorry, created the new page. It's loaded with its default content or its template content. Let's quickly add um, some information here, like our current speakers list. I'm just going to open up the events widget category, drag and drop the speakers list. Let's go ahead and have it in the middle column just below share your ideas. I guess I also want to change the layout. I'm not a fan of the um, uh, single single width. I would like more information. So let's go ahead and choose the three column layout again. 
And after a short delay, we'll see um, that, that the page is reorganized to use the three columns. We don't see them because they are further down the page. Here we are, here's our three columns. Let's quickly reorganize um, um, some of this by clicking and dragging those six dots in the top left of the widget and moving it into its location here. So I'm just trying to get it into the um, lower column there. I'm having a little bit of a, of a hard time. I'm just going to do this for the speaker's widget, and I assume it'll get easier as I move them around here. Okay, this one is providing me with some, some stickiness. But, but again, this is default content. So if you wouldn't like it and would like to create your own, you can just remove it by clicking the X icon in the top right of the widget. And then you can just add your own um, either custom widget content or pre-formatted widget content. Let me quickly show you an image with caption here. So we've added uh, the one that was saved to the page, image with caption one, back to the page. We can add our, a new one by using the image with caption widget with a plus icon instead of the magnifying glass icon. OK, and that's a new one. We can add an image by hovering over the image area, clicking the pencil icon, and then choosing an image. And then for, for these pre-formatted widgets, a lot of the time you'll see a pencil icon to show you that you can edit the uh, text in the text or images in the widget. So let's replace this uh, uh, text with, um, uh, pardon me, Rotary 2020. 122. I'm just going to quickly get some content in there just for uh, the sake of this page here. Okay, we've we've changed some information here. We've moved a widget. Uh, we've added the speakers widget. We've created a new pre-formatted widget with this image with caption. Um, you can also add a custom widget. Let's go ahead and just add a global custom widget. I'm going to use this this three ladies custom widget that has been saved to the global custom widget category. And to preview it, I click the magnifying glass for the custom widget. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop that into place. Let's also create a quick new custom widget. I'm just going to, for the sake of simplicity, enter the text new custom widget with an exclamation mark. And I'm also going to retitle this widget to our new custom widget um, July 13th, once I get the title properties here. There we are. The properties have loaded. Scrolling to the title, I'm going to call it new custom widget July 13th. Oops, July 13th, and save this title. OK, and I've saved the new custom widget. If I refresh the page, the next time we open up this global custom widget grouping, it should include the new custom widget July 13th. Uh, we're, we're almost wrapping up. I've finished building this custom page almost. And then we're going to link it into the navigation menu, and we'll move on to Q&A. So thank you all for your, your attention and your time here. Um, we're still wrapping up here. So I've created this new custom widget. I've opened up the custom widget global grouping. And if I review here, we should find new custom widget um, in the in the I'm looking for it here. I don't see it. It should be it should be saved here. We found the three ladies widget. Um, here we are. Pardon me. It's right here, the sixth widget, widget, new custom widget, July 13th. If I go ahead and drag and drop this onto this page, it'll repeat twice. And um, and you can also add it to your club's homepage. And they all share the same widget. So if one is updated, they'll all update. OK, I'm going to remove the, the duplicate widget. I just wanted to show you that once you save it, it is available as the widget it was created. So this was a global custom widget. But for any other custom widgets that are saved to the page, um, typically in the pre-formatted widget section, you'll find those saved versions with the magnifying glass. OK, we're done with this custom page. Let's publish our changes to the new Become a Speaker page. Um, I guess I want to mention you can also retitle the page by opening up the Custom Page Properties tab and then entering a new title. Let's go ahead, New Speaker Page as the new title for this page. Once I click out of that, it'll prompt me. It wants to update the permalink, which is the URL for this custom page. Page, and it's updated that to new dash speaker dash page. OK, we're done naming the page. Let's go ahead and save this. Once I save it, we'll see the new page title, new speaker page. Let's publish the custom page and return to the uh, navigation menu to add our new custom page. So to do that, I'm going to go through the home page designer by clicking new website beta in the top blue bar then homepage designer in the gray bar just below. And that'll take us to our homepage designer to edit the navigation. 
I'm going to hover over the navigation menu and click the outbound arrow icon. Again, when you're working in the designer, you'll see one of two icons to change the content, either this outbound arrow icon to take you to the area to manage the content, or for custom widgets or preformatted widgets, you'll see a pencil icon to immediately edit the content in the designer. Let's go ahead, edit the navigation. I'm going to throw our new custom page link into this about our club folder. And to do that without dragging and dropping it in there, I'm going to click this add menu item link for the folder. Okay, we've got our uh, add menu item page open up here, um, new speaker page as, as, as what we titled the page. And again, we're going to use this link type drop down to find the content that we've created in the club database. So I'm going to choose custom page and we created the um, new speaker page. There it is, our new custom speaker page. I'm just going to select it and click the orange save button and that'll save um, um, the item into the into the folder here. I'm not seeing it. Uh, if I scroll down here, hmm, I'm not seeing it, but let's try uh, one more time. I'm just going to go ahead, add menu item, new speaker page, and then choose the link type custom page, new speaker page, and save the link. It should appear here. I'm not certain why. Let's go ahead and use the orange add new menu item method here. So I'm going to go new speaker page and link type custom page, new speaker page, and save the link. And we should see it at the very bottom of our navigation menu. There it is, new speaker page, and we can click and drag to move it into the About Our Club folder like we initially planned here. And I've plopped it in there. Again, before you leave any of these areas, make sure to publish your changes if you'd like them to be public. I'm going to go ahead and do so. And that's our custom page. Let's quickly take a look at it from our homepage. So I'm going to get back to the homepage by clicking Home in the top right. Again, we're almost wrapping up. I do want to show you guys the donation page once you have an online payment account and how it operates. And um, after that, I'll also show you that you can embed media into your club stories and uh, we'll move on to the Q&A section. So let me wrap up here in our navigation menu in the About Our Club tab. We have our new speaker page, custom page. I'm going to go ahead and click that and that'll open up our uh, new speaker page with the share your ideas, our logo and text that we've added, as well as the three ladies who are looking at us from the right column. Um, uh, and so, so that's how you can get a custom page into your navigation menu. Let me move on to the donation module. In the member area, you'll find the donations module in the donations beta module tab, and then donation settings would be the first place you'd have to go to set the module. I don't have the time to cover setting and configuring the module, but we do have guides on the Club Runner knowledge base to set your club's donation page. Once you have it set, it'll look something like this. You can enter these custom donation amounts. Uh, a, a visitor can choose one and then click the donate button and they'll get a, a form to submit their donation as well as a confirmation form once they submit their do donation that you can customize the confirmation page. So just keep that in mind. You can configure your club's donation module once you have an online payment account. And once it's all set, the system will take care of building the page for you with the settings you've created and putting in the form and then the confirmation message that you would set in your club's donation settings. Okay, finally, I wanna show you this embed media tool because I know a lot of clubs would get uh, a lot of value out of either including a video into a home page or story right there so that a user can click it and then watch it. Um, to do that, let me, let me use the custom page and a custom widget to show you guys that. So I'm gonna use new website beta and then click uh, custom page library to open up a custom page. Let's use our um, new speaker page page. It should be here. There we are, new speaker page. I'm going to hover over it, click the blue open pencil. And here we are in the page designer for a custom widget to get to uh, to get to all of the editor tools. So I, I, I've gone a little quickly here, but if I click the pencil icon to edit the custom widget content, we can see that we don't have as many tools as we have in the story editor. And to get to the full editor for custom widgets, you can hover over it and click the outbound arrow icon. And it'll take you to the edit custom widget title page. And once you're here, you'll have more options to include um, more, more editor tools. So uh, the one I want to show you is this embed media editor tool. Let me show you how you can quickly get a video into your custom widget. In another tab, I'm just going to open up youtube.com and then search for Club Runner. 
And here we have our Club Runner channel. I'm going to go open up this video. And to get this video onto the page, I'm going to scroll down, click this share link. And here we have the embed media tool options. So I'm going to click embed media. And here is the embed media code. I'm going to copy this code. As a matter of fact, they give me a little copy link right here. You also have some options you can set to the video, such as a custom start time, but this is all YouTube. Um, we've got the embed code. Let's return to the custom widget. And here I'm going to delete our, our default text and go embed media and then paste the code that we just copied from YouTube and click OK. It may look, oh, OK, it looks good here. Let's click Save and Publish. And with that, the uh, there we are. Our new custom widget July 13th is showing an iframe, and this is where the video is being held. Let me show you the video on the custom page. I'm just moving it into the middle column for more space. Let's publish the change. And returning to the home page, I already have the home page open here. I'm going to go about our club new speaker page. And if we scroll down, we should see that the video is available right here on the page. And I can click the play button. And it, and it is available right here on the page. So just keep that in mind while you're designing um, custom widgets. You can embed media. And in addition to YouTube videos, you can include Google Forms. OK, I, I did want to get to the bulletin webinar, or sorry, the bulletin section. I didn't really have time. So please keep it in mind that you can check out clubrunner.com forward slash training. And in our deep dive series, we have the bulletin live designer on July 26. You can just register by clicking register and uh, you'll get your Zoom link to join us. Um, and again, to get to this changeover training page in the top of your browser, you can type in clubrunner.com forward slash training. And that'll take you to this registration page. And I also want to show you the clubrunnersupport.com knowledge base. Here we have all of our help articles and recorded video guides. Um, if you'd like to watch our recorded videos, not necessarily these changeover trainings, just other recorded webinars, you can click the videos and webinars section. And then you'll have our recorded webinars and video tutorial section to find more video learning in addition to all of the articles that exist in the rest of the knowledge base. So definitely check out clubrunnersupport.com. And if you'd like uh, to join us for more training, clubrunner.com forward slash training. And, uh, and we'd love to have you join us for more webinars. Um, I don't want to spend too much more time on the webinar here. I want to hand it over to Sean to answer your questions. But I want to mention I won't be gone. I'll be in the Q&A box below, and I'll also be answering your questions. Then. So thank you so much, Sean for taking care of this. And, I'll, and without uh, further ado, I'll pass it on to you. Thanks, Sean. Perfect. Thank you very much, Omar. And thank you, everyone, for uh, posting all those great questions uh, in the uh, Q&A section. Uh, there was quite a bit. I did try to answer uh, as many as I could here. And I did uh, pull some uh, common questions uh, for us uh, to answer in the uh, live Q&A session. So let's go ahead and start it here. Perfect. Okay, so the first question uh, that we have is, uh, what is the difference between the uh, new website beta and the website on the toolbar? Uh, so if you do notice here up at the top, we do have our uh, new website beta along with the uh, legacy uh, website designer. So uh, Omar did a great job uh, of uh, uh, going through the uh, new website beta. Uh, this website designer is our legacy or older uh, designer. Uh, so it doesn't have all the uh, neat features uh, of the, uh, the live designer. So uh, if we go ahead and click on website, click on website designer, and then we can click on the edit content section to edit the uh, content this here, we can see uh, that we have a very similar uh, uh, structure here where we have uh, our widgets uh, and the different uh, layout uh, sections. But the, uh, the key here is we don't have that live designer. So the big difference between the uh, legacy designer and the new uh, beta version <clears throat> is that the beta version uh, provides that live designer uh, so that you can uh, drag widgets in. You can see the changes as you're making them uh, rather than uh, just seeing the, uh, the actual widget uh, like you do with the, uh, with the old designer. We did have another question here uh, about uh, the uh, website versus uh, website beta. <clears throat> the question was, uh, if our site was designed with the older website function, uh, can we edit in the new website beta? Can we edit in either of them? 
or once we make a change in one, uh, do we have to stick with that one? So uh, that's a great question. Uh, we do get that, uh, we do receive that question quite often. Um, the website designer, so the legacy version, which we see here, uh, or the new website uh, beta, so the live designer, uh, can both be used. Uh, so of course we do recommend uh, using the beta version because uh, it is the newer version. It does have the uh, live designer, uh, which makes it a lot easier uh, to edit the uh, the pages and see the changes as you're making them. So we do recommend the uh, new website beta, but uh, regardless of uh, which uh, designer you use, uh, both will be editing the uh, same information, the same website. So um, you can see here we have the homepage carousel up at the top. If I go to the new website beta and I click homepage designer, we see we have that same homepage carousel up at the top. So, uh, you know, if you in the past uh, worked with the uh, legacy website designer and you guys want to try the new beta live designer, uh, no problem. Uh, please feel free to, to do that. Um, you can you can certainly take advantage of, of the new uh, designer, regardless of if you're uh, currently uh, using the, uh, the legacy designer. And yes, you can, of course, edit uh, the website using either the legacy or the uh, the new version. So they, you can use uh, both of them. There was a, another question here. Uh, is there a way to get rid of the click here button at the bottom of the widget? Uh, what is the purpose of the button? So let's take a look here. If we go to the stories widgets here. I don't think, oh, we do have it here, perfect. Uh, so we already have the uh, stories widget uh, displayed here and uh, the uh, item in question is here, this read more uh, button. Uh, so this read more button will appear uh, on the uh, stories as well as the news uh, widget. Uh, if the uh, story that's displayed has um, content uh, outside of the story brief. So I know Omar mentioned it earlier, uh, when creating the story, you have the option of entering a story brief uh, as well as the uh, story content. Um, so, uh, you know, by default, we do display the story brief here. And if there is uh, something in the story content, we do display the uh, read more button so that users can uh, click that read more button and uh, view the entire uh, story. So what you can do if you want to uh, remove that read more button, uh, you can hover over the widget. You can click the gear icon on the top right. And we're going to scroll down. <clears throat> and under the settings section, you'll see there's a show read more link. So if I go ahead and uncheck this, I'll go ahead and click save. You can now see that the uh, the read more button uh, no longer appears. So if I just go ahead and publish the change and we go back to the home page and I'm just going to refresh here. You can see we no longer have uh, that button. Uh, of course, if you still want to uh, access the entire story, you can click the title. Uh, so if I click this title here, uh, it will take me to the uh, entire story uh, where you can view uh, the, uh, uh, the story content. Uh, now, the reason why we do provide the uh, brief and the content section is to ensure that the club can uh, limit the amount of uh, text that you have on the uh, homepage. I know there were a few questions in the Q&A about um, how much text to display uh, on the uh, on the homepage. Um, ideally, you don't want a, a big wall of, of text uh, that drags on um, all the way down the, uh, the website or the homepage. What you want ideally is a, a nice paragraph just to capture the uh, reader's attention and uh, you know have that read more uh, button so that they can uh, click on it and, and read more about it. So we'll go, just go back here and of course if we want to add that button back uh, we can click the gear icon and just enable it again. So we'll scroll down to the bottom, we'll enable the read more link and we'll go ahead and click save. And sort of related uh, to that question, we did have another question about the difference between uh, stories and news. Uh, so they actually are very similar in the way they work. Uh, 
so as we can see here, uh, we do have the stories widget. So if we go back and we'll go ahead and add the news widget. We'll just add it uh, on the side here. So you can see here uh, that we now we have the uh, stories on the main section and we have the news on the right section and both of them display uh, different stories. So uh, that's the uh, main reason why we have the news versus stories. So if the club has uh, you know, a different list of uh, stories uh, that they want to appear on the uh, the homepage or the website, um, they can they can use both the uh, club stories widget as well as the uh, the club news. So, for example, um, let's say uh, you wanted to use the uh, club new, the club stories uh, widget uh, for things uh, that uh, you know the club is doing or uh, things about the club, and then you can uh, use the uh, club news widget uh, for maybe things happening uh, outside of the club. Just as an example, so uh, you can uh, you know have two sets of uh, of uh, lists of, of stories. So that is the the reason why we have. Have uh, both the uh, stories and the news, but uh, functionality-wise, uh, they are uh, fairly similar. Uh, one difference uh, you may notice is if you go to the properties for the uh, news, if we scroll down <clears throat> under settings, uh, we only have the show read more option. But if we close this and we open up the properties for the club stories, and we scroll down, uh, we have a few more options. Um, so we do have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, with the uh, stories widget, uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, but uh, both of them do, uh, you know, pull from the story library. Uh, both of them just allow you to uh, customize, uh, you know, or maintain two separate lists of, of stories. Uh, there was another question uh, we we actually get uh, quite often uh, was. Uh, in terms of the uh, website designer, I know we, we talked about it a little bit earlier, um, but uh, there's a, a question about uh, if they need to, if uh, you guys need to do anything uh, to transfer data between the uh, old website designer and the new website designer. And the answer to that again is uh, no. Uh, the information or the, the data that each of them edits uh, is both the same. So uh, regardless of if you're editing uh, the home page on the old designer or the new designer, um, it's both uh, both of them are editing the exact same page. Um, the main difference is, of course, uh, the user experience. So uh, with the uh, new bulletin uh, beta designer, you have that live uh, preview, which you can see the changes as you make them whereas the old one uh, does not. So uh, yes, uh, you, uh, you can definitely use both. And no, you do not need to worry about transferring uh, your data between both. Uh, they both edit the exact same uh, page. So uh, you can definitely feel free to, uh, to use uh, the new designer. Okay. And uh, we do have a question here uh, about how we can access the image library. Uh, is it only available uh, when you go to add an image? So uh, no, we do have a, a way to actually access the, um, the image library directly. Uh, so if you want to go in and manage the images, uh, if you want to um, you know, create folders or anything like that, um, you can do that without having to go to a location where you need to uh, upload an image. So uh, to do that, uh, you can click the website tab at the uh, on the menu bar near the top. And then we're going to go ahead and click website content on the menu bar directly below. And then on the left here, we have the library. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And again, on the left, we have the image library option. And then here uh, we can now, uh, you know, manage the uh, images that we have available here. Uh, if we want, we can uh, create subfolders and organize the uh, images a little bit. Uh, and one other thing I do want to note is when you are uh, in the image library, you do have options uh, up at the top right. Uh, so you can view the deleted images as well. So if there's an image you might have accidentally deleted, um, you can go into the deleted uh, images and you can um, 
you, you can uh, restore them uh, directly from, from the image library. Okay, and another question, this is a multi-part question here, uh, is how do I upload a document to the, um, uh, the club account uh, and how do I link it uh, to a story? So that's the first part. Uh, and then the uh, second part is how can I set it so that only members can view it? So that's a great question. Uh, so let's start with the, uh, the first one. So how do I upload a document into Club Runner? Uh, Omar did uh, touch on that, but if we go to um, organization, so the organization tab on the menu bar near the top, and then click on the documents link on the menu bar directly below. It'll take us to our uh, documents, private documents list. And from here, we can go ahead and click the add button. I'll just go ahead and give it a name. The permalink will uh, auto populate, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and there, part of the question was, how do we ensure that members can, uh, it's only a member accessible. So um, when you are creating the document, we do have the access level here. Uh, there's public and requires login. Uh, if you uh, set this to requires login, the uh, when the user uh, clicks on the link or tries to access this particular document, uh, they will be brought to the uh, login page uh, where uh, they'll have to log in in order to, uh, to access that. So we will take a look at that here shortly. Uh, so let's go ahead and just click choose file to upload a file. And we'll just upload this nice Club Runner image. Go ahead and click save. Okay, and we can now see it here under uh, the private documents. And do note that there is a little padlock icon um, on the, uh, the little logo there. Uh, that indicates that this is uh, for members only. So if I go and just quickly edit this again, I'm gonna set this to public and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. you'll see that my document now no longer has the, um, uh, the padlock icon. So if I go ahead and let's enable this as requires login. So we'll go ahead and click save. I'm gonna go ahead and get the link here. So I'll copy it. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's paste it in here. And because we are logged in, I do have access to it. But if I go back here, I log out. I'm gonna go ahead and try this again. And you can see now it redirects me to the uh, login page. So uh, if you do have uh, any documents that have any personal information, any sensitive information, um, we do highly, highly recommend uh, that you set it to uh, requires login. Uh, this way it's not um, uh, just uh, available uh, to uh, the public. Uh, a member will have to log in in order to access it. Uh, and one other thing to note that uh, if, if you upload uh, a document um, and it is set to public, um, even if it's not published to the website, uh, if for example, the direct link like we used here, uh, is shared, uh, then, uh, you know, non-members will still be able to access it. So be very careful uh, when you are working with uh, private inter, um, private information uh, and make sure that you do set that to uh, requires login to ensure that, uh, you know, members of the public uh, don't uh, access that. So I'll go ahead and log in. And then now, of course, we can go back and we uh, can access it. Okay, I think that about wraps it up for the uh, live Q&A session. Let me just double check here, make sure that we got all of them. It looks like we did. Perfect. So thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. Hopefully uh, you guys found that very useful. Uh, as Omar mentioned, uh, if you do have any questions or if you're stuck on anything, please feel free uh, to visit our clubrunnersupport.com website, uh, or you can contact us support at clubrunner.ca. Uh, you can also join us uh, and start a conversation on our online community at www.clubrunnercommunity.com. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you for attending. Have a great day.